if you're using every dollar or some kind of online budgeting software and you go out to take cash out of an ATM or get cash back at a store, how do you handle that inside of every dollar? Well, I'm going to be going through that today. Hey guys and welcome back. My name is Craig and I'm a financial coach who is passionate about helping people break the paycheck to paycheck cycle and finally find some peace of mind when it comes to their money. Now, if you use every dollar like I do or something else, like you need a budget or whatever budgeting software you're using, you know that when you go take cash out of an ATM, it sometimes can be tricky making that reconcile inside of that software because it's showing up out of your bank as a $20 withdrawal, but maybe you're using that money for restaurants later or a little bit for at the grocery store or whatever. How can you handle that inside of your budget? We're gonna look at two different ways to manage that inside of every dollar, but before we dig in, I do want to offer you a free financial freedom roadmap. This is your step-by-step -step guide out of the paycheck to paycheck cycle. It's literally gonna show you everything you need to do from A to Z to finally feel like you have control of your money and that your money is actually yours to keep, right? What a novel idea. So grab that roadmap here, I'll email it directly to you. Okay, let's dig into my every dollar account. So you're going to the ATM, you pull out 20, 40, 100 bucks, whatever it is. Um, you're gonna use that, maybe you're going out to eat and you're gonna maybe buy some clothes. Maybe you're on a weekend trip and you're just pulling some cash out and you're gonna use it for various things that you would stick in different spots inside your budget. How can you manage that? Well, there's a couple of ways. So number one, you pull the cash out and you don't even do anything inside the software yet, right? So let's say you go withdraw 50 bucks or 20 bucks. Um, we'll say 20 bucks. Um, don't do anything. Don't log anything. In fact, um, if you have every dollar plus, if you see that transaction pop up, you can just delete it. So you can see ATM withdrawal $20. You could just delete it. Then as you're spending that money, that's where you log it. Now for my free uh, people, this is just going to be business as usual because you're used to actually opening up the app and tracking it. So let's say you go out to eat and you spend $10 of that cash um, at um, Tacos and More. I don't, I don't think that's a real place, but um, let's say you spend 10 bucks there. Great. So you have $10 left in your wallet in cash. What are you going to do with the rest of it? Well, maybe you stop at the store for um, milk. So that's whatever, five bucks, you put it there, um, you get the gist of it, and then you have five more. And so you just log it as you spend that cash. This is likely what you're doing if you're using the cash envelope system. I have a full video on how to use the cash envelopes with every dollar, I'll link to that for you. Uh, but this is likely what you're doing. You're pulling that cash out of the bank at the beginning of the month, and then you're spending it throughout the month. So you're having to go in here and actually type them in. If you're used to using every dollar plus, this is where you're going to have to actually type them in manually because obviously as you're spending cash, it's not going to be showing up inside of there. Now, if you're doing cash envelopes and you're using every dollar plus, again, I have the video there. Um, if you pull out $100 for restaurants, you would just drag that withdrawal to the restaurants um, and it's there because you know you're following the cash. This is really more for that ATM or you're at the store and you get $20 cash back that you're going to use for little things, maybe $5 for your kid's allowance, little things here and there. So number one is to pull it out, ignore the transaction itself and just drop them in as you go. Another thing you can do is you can create a holding place. Um, I'm going to find, I'm just going to do it in lifestyle. It doesn't matter which category you do. Um, ATM holding. I'm not going to budget anything for this because eventually it's going to level itself out. Whenever the transaction comes through and every dollar plus, I'm going to drag it here. So it just sits there. It's just a holding spot. Then as I spend money, um, we're going to click on the item, we're going to click on the transaction, and we can start splitting it to where we want to go. Um, so you can add a split, so let's just do the exact same transactions as did. Um, we go out to eat, I spend $10 there, 
I'm going to leave $10 in my hold because I haven't spent it yet. Um, boom. And you'll see that $10 goes to restaurants. If I come up to restaurants, it'll be titled ATM withdrawal. Um, but $10 goes there. And I still have that $10 cash, which is shown right here. Um, then I go get the milk. Um, so I'm going to click on the transaction again. I'm going to add a new split. I'm going to click on groceries. We spent five bucks. Um, I need to adjust this to five. So this one's kind of a messier way to do it, but it at least holds you accountable to the fact that you have cash. If you're somebody who's worried that um, that cash is going to just be sitting in your wallet and you're going to forget about it or or it's whatever, or you're going to spend it and not log it, then we want to put it somewhere in the budget. Otherwise, you can just pull it out um, and do business as usual, like I said. If you know you're going to spend the full 20 um, on the ATM money on restaurants, then you can just drag the full thing to restaurants right out the gate. This is really if you're pulling out money and you're going to use it just cash on hand to pay for a few things here and there as you need to. I hope that clears something up, clears mud, right? Um, how do you manage it? If you're doing ATM withdrawals or cash back, what are you doing to keep it straight? You may have a better idea than I do. We would love to hear it down in the comments section below. Um, guys, I would also love it if you subscribe to my channel. If you want to see more videos like this on every dollar, on other things involving personal finances, hit that subscribe button to catch every video every week. Um, and I would love to walk with you more. All right, guys. Take care. I'll see you next time. All right.